It's a brand new campaign of the 2021-22 edition of the Momentum Multiply Titan Show. And we hope you're ready for another exciting season of cricket with all the latest news from South Africa's leading cricket team, the Momentum Multiply Titans. Without any further ado, let's check out the lineup for this upcoming episode. Coming up, the CEO of the Titans, Jacques Paul, talks about the new season ahead. Titans Cricket launches the Centre for Mediation in Sport in Swane. And finally, we bring you all the action from the Momentum Multiply Titans pre-season tour of Namibia. We caught up with the CEO of Momentum Multiply Titans, Dr. Jacques Fall. He's taken time to unpack the team's performances and challenges from last season and what the expectations are for this current campaign. Yeah, we, we are a franchise that's un, always under pressure to win a trophy, so that is our expectation. It's been a tough uh, um, season, the previous season, in that we played in bubbles. Uh, we're also a little bit um, disappointed in, in some of the formats where we only played one, one match. But in saying that, you know, it, it did help continue uh, cricket to be played, so we're thankful for that. Um, but hopefully we will have a more of a, a normal season. Uh, we're not very keen on, on the bubble. Um, it also um, results in one team having um, many home matches uh, while we only have away matches, so that does impact on it. Be that, uh, be it as it may, we are that franchise that needs to win trophies, so we'll be under pressure again. I think we've contracted well, it is a good squad. We'll always lose players to the um, national team and that's part of our focus as well. We want to develop players for the national team, but again under huge pressure uh, to win trophies. The domestic structure came with changes this season and the same can be said about the squad. With the new additions and how they're able to adapt with the more experienced players and their contributions to the team dynamics. I think we've got exciting young players coming in. Young Brevis uh, still got a debut for us, but you know we're excited about him. We've uh, seen uh, Sean Nairman do well for us already. Uh, Donovan Ferreira has done exceptionally well for us. So um, we've got a pipeline that produces uh, very good players. We've got good clubs, a fantastic university. Um, we think we got the mix right between uh, experienced and uh, young players. But you know, the season will tell. Um, like I say, we always lose players to the national team. That's going to happen. We've got to have a strong enough pipeline to compete and still win trophies. The women's team will be one of their main focal points and one of their primary goals is to demonstrate more gender equality and fairness. Yeah, I think the women's team um, will be a big focus for us. We will be in the process of talking to commercial partners. I think women's cricket in the last two years have seen uh, unprecedented rise in interest um, worldwide. Uh, it's a, uh, we've got wonderful players, so a new coach. Uh, they also need to be competitive, similar to the men's team. Uh, they need to be um, winning trophies. But we definitely would have a commercial focus going forward with the women. I think it is, has become a sellable product. And also in terms of fairness, in terms of gender equity, um, we've got to justify um, ourselves in it. So definitely a big part of my job nowadays is to, to commercialise the, the women's team. With COVID-19 having affected fans from attending games at the stadium in the previous season, it's exciting to be welcoming them back in this current campaign and Supersport Park is definitely looking forward to hosting more fans. Yeah, it'll be great to have our fans back. I think it plays a part um, you know, in our success. We've been very privileged to win um, home finals and, and that speaks to you know wonderful support so hopefully we can uh, deliver on that again for our fans to give you a home final um, you know the whole world is still battling with this pandemic but the moment we get through to that um, please come and support us again we're very thankful for our loyal support and we hope to make you proud uh, with the team performing Yeah, we always aim to be number one in, in every single competition. It's not always uh, possible, but I, I guess the instructions are quite clear to the coaches is they got to win trophies. I mean, that is the commodity for any coaches is winning trophies. We've been very blessed in the past, and I guess that also creates expectation. But we do think we have the squad to um, win trophies, and, and that, that is our aim. We, 
We don't want to have a good season where we compete, we want silverware. And we've been blessed with it in the past and you know that's the clear instruction, winners trophies. So much to look forward to this season from the Momentum Multiply Titans this season and we're wishing them all the best of luck. Titans Cricket are proud to announce the opening of the Centre for Mediation in Sport to deal with conflict and disputes. The Centre for Mediation in Sport will be based at Supersport Park Stadium in Centurion and will provide a bouquet of services for those individuals who are enlisted under its panel as a mediator. I think it's a historic moment in sport in South Africa that we've opened up a Centre for Mediation focusing just on sports disputes. Um, this mediation is, is an alternative dispute resolution that's used more and more. The High Court has changed these uh, rules to make a, a provision that you've got to mediate first or indicate why you can't mediate. Uh, there's a lot of disputes in, in sport that should be done privately behind closed doors. So I think the Centre for Mediation in Sport is an ideal mechanism. We invite uh, the public, we invite the legal fraternity and also the sports fraternity to make use of the Centre for Mediation in Sport. I'm very excited about the initiative. Um, what this means is that hopefully in the future anybody in the sporting environment in South Africa, and I'm hoping you will spread beyond Africa, will have somewhere that they can go if a conflict arises. So there's a dispute in sport, it doesn't matter whether it's between players, administrators, sponsors, whoever. This uh, centre that you've started here is going to be a place where people can come, they can talk to one another in the presence of a mediator, somebody with specialised knowledge how to deal with conflict, and he will help them to find solutions themselves. So the mediator is not going to tell them what to do or what not to do, he's just going to facilitate the process so that solutions can be found, and that's very exciting. So much so that I'm hoping that this doesn't stop here, just sport, that you actually use the centre to help people on a much broader scale find solutions to conflict because we really need that in South Africa at the moment. There's too much fighting going on. It takes an incredible amount of time for solutions. Some, one case that I'm still busy with now has been going for 17 years. And that's not unusual. There are many cases that last five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years. And they cost millions. And all the time that this conflict is going on, the people are suffering trauma and tension and unhappiness. And it leads to divorces. It leads to people in communities fighting with one another and all sorts of problems. And if you can bring those problems to a center like this and somebody can attend to it in a mediated environment, you can have peace and you can have a solution within a day or two. What's better? Cost a fraction, less than 1% of what litigation costs to resolve matters in mediation. Our target market is, of course, anybody that's, got a, that's dealing with a, 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 a sports dispute or a dispute in sport. And that could be a, a legal practitioner, it could be a national federation, a club, an individual, a player. Anybody that has got a, a dispute in sport, please use the Centre for Mediation. Go on our website and have a look. Um, you can select a panelist, uh, you can also make use of our facilities and our administration. Um, resolve those disputes behind closed doors, that is probably the best way to do it. Mediation centres like these adopt a flexible approach compared to tedious legal and costly processes before the court and we hope such institutions will mend and restore sports relationships. We're taking a quick ad break, but don't go anywhere because after it, we'll bring you the moments of the Momentum Multiply Titans pre-season camp in Namibia. The Momentum Multiply Titans got their preseason off to an adventurous start by taking on Namibia in five matches across six days in the country's capital, Windhoek. 
the T20 World Cup bound Namibians offered a stern test for the Titans and the tour kicked off with a 50 over per side pink day clash followed by four T20 battles. good to be in Vintuk. Uh, we've got a week with uh, the Namibian cricket side. I know they're obviously getting uh, their preparations underway for their World Cup campaign. Yeah, and what a great time for us to come and get out and get some uh, cobwebs uh, out of the system. Uh, it's been a long pre-season for us already. Happy to be here to play against Namibia, a very, very strong side which is going to the World Cup. And we've brought a good side as well and the boys are very, very keen as you can see, like they're busy training there. And uh, yes, we're looking forward to it. We've got 150 over game and uh, four T20 games. We're starting with a 50 over game tomorrow. Uh, I don't think we've had a 50 over game in uh, a couple of months, so I think there's going to be a few sore bodies come Sunday. Saying that, we're a professional outfit. We've got to do what we have to do, and um, yeah, can't wait to get started. I think winning the toss was probably, I'd say, the icebreaker. I mean, I had to, I had to win the first fight, which was a toss. Um, and after winning the toss, I kind of eased my way uh, back into it. You know, I gave it a little fist pump. Uh, I haven't seen many captains do that when they win the toss, but yeah, that's how much it, it meant, you know, just to start off the tour on the right note. Having won the toss, Captain Sibonella Makanya chose to bat first. Tunis De Brain top scored with 62 and was assisted in the middle by Neil Brunt, who scored a handy 30. Diane Khalim and Corbin Bosch both produced scores in the 30s to set Namibia a target of 225 for victory. Daisy and I just, we went in the middle, we just told each other, just steady the ship and then Daisy gave me some good advice and we decided, okay, cool, let's put the guys under a little bit of pressure. And then all of a sudden the run started flowing and then like we just went on momentum and all of a sudden we had a really defendable total of 225. The Titans bowlers kept it tight with wickets falling regularly. Michael van Lingen and JJ Smith were the only batsmen to offer any real resistance, cracking 51. 68 respectively. Bosch and Ayabalela Kamane finished things up with both men grabbing three sticks apiece. It was great, a little bit nerve-wracking um, but yeah it was awesome man I mean there's so much experience to bounce ideas uh, from from the teammates so it's they always make your job a little bit easier um, but yeah they, there's, there is always that pressure uh, to produce when you put on that Titan shirt and even more pressure when you have the, the responsibility of captaincy. Um, but I definitely enjoyed it. it. It was great fun and I mean we, we had a good time out there and it was a great way to start off the tour. A guy like Sibonello Macanya, you know, like his first stint as captain for the Titans, you know, I really, really think he led well. I mean, like he was quite calm, you know, under pressure. And uh, yes, he really, really did well. I mean, also, you know, like there were guys around him as well who, who like did help him. So um, yes, quite happy. I think he's got a future, you know, in terms of leadership in, in our structures. Tough to judge you half the one game, but I mean, uh, the result went our way, which is quite nice. It was good to see a lot of the players put up a good fight. Conditions that we're obviously not very uh, familiar with, but I thought Sibs led, led, led the side well. A new format and a new captain. Proteus test skipper, Dean Alga. Having won the toss and elected to bowl first, the Titans managed to restrict the hosts to 140 all out, with Stefan Barr top scoring with 62 of 49 balls. Bosch was once again instrumental with ball in hand, claiming three wickets at an economy rate of just 3.42. New recruit Proteus Spinner Aaron Pangiso also chipped in 
with three sticks. The Titans never really got going in reply, with only one boundary being hit by Ayakamane. I know it is a bit tough, you know, uh, obviously conditions are a bit different, uh, but I don't think that we actually read conditions very well, you know, we, we, we are an experienced side, so we, should be, we shouldn't be losing like this. Uh, hopefully the next game will do better. The second T20 saw the Titans come back harder and stronger. Having won the toss again, Alga decided to bat. Brunt and Debrain steadied the ship at the top, scoring 39 and 32 respectively. Kalim added 24 to leave the home side needing 153 for victory. It was a hard-fought battle with only four wickets falling. But it became a nail-biter going down to the very last ball. Looking at the, at the, the score that I had to, I had to defend, um, I had to be very clinical. Um, I had to just back my skill a little bit. Um, and you know, we're working on a, on a, on a few variations at the, at the death. And uh, today I backed my wide walk off, um, as, as, as did the rest of the team. And we tried to get that win at the end. The third T20 was a do or die affair for the men in blue, who needed nothing but a win in order to try and level the series. Winning the toss for a third time in a row, Captain Alga had no hesitation in batting first, which paid off, with Brunt and Debrain setting the tone, scoring 44 and 65 respectively, as they helped set the Eagles a challenging 176 for victory. They're Tux boys, and you can, you can pick it up in the way that they play the game. Um, quite strong, quite confident. And I mean, when, when they play well, you always see that the team will always follow. Um, you know, and I think it's the guys with big presence at the crease. Um, and they pretty much, for me, they embody what the Titans are about. You know, when, when, when those guys are out there, the, the people on the side are calm. And I think, it's, I think they're a great combination. The Namibian innings struggled to get going with Okukle Kele instrumental in his first game on tour grabbing three wickets at an average of just 4.75 in his allotted four overs. Pangisa also contributed with two sticks. In the end, the Sky Blues were victorious, restricting the hosts to 150. Obviously, the conditions benefit the type of bowler I am, so I look to obviously cash in and just to make sure that I have simple plans and stuff, so I'm happy about that and I'm happy to get three wickets to contribute to the team. It all came down to the fourth and final T20, the Titans needing a win to draw the series, while Namibia simply needed a victory to secure the series. Bart and Williams top scored at the top with 42 and 33. The Titans fought hard with Pangiso and Debrain both suffering injuries. Taylor and Brandt each bagged two wickets with the hosts setting the Titans a rather challenging 175 for victory. Dang split his webbing, so I had to do a job for the team, and luckily I bowled off in the warm up, so I was ready to go. Yeah, so just obviously very happy to contribute and uh, get a couple of big wickets. The task was a tough one. The only real contributions coming from Kalim and Bosch, who produced scores in the 30s. They played some good cricket today, and for the for the series, I think they a well-organized team. Um, obviously, we came here with the intention to win as well. We came short. Um, the nice thing is that I think the guys know where we went wrong, and we are ready to fix it. And we'll go back to the drawing board and and try and you know really focus on some basics. You know, you know, like he's an old soldier. You know, he really, really like led this young side very well. You know, like he led from the front, I mean, you know, he led by example. And uh, besides on the field, I mean, off the field, I mean, he has a massive, massive role to play. And, uh, you know, like you'll see him at the dinners, you know, until, you know, we're coming through and with those young players, you know, just talking cricket. And the guys are quite eager as well to learn. And uh, like the best guys that we have here, like we've got Dennis Debray and we've got Dean Elga, you know, a guy like Junior Dalla as well, even though, you know, like he 
he like didn't play any game, but like their contributions as well off the field, I mean, like was quite massive. It's been a great week. It's been a challenging week, but there's no better place to get preparation than out in the middle against a quality Namibian team. And uh, we've had a, a good chance to bond as a unit, uh, to work on game plans, and to challenge ourselves under pressure. It's good to come out and play cricket again. Um, I know some of the guys have been cooped up at home and they've just been doing the off-season, pre-season stuff, which, which gets a little, bit, a little bit frustrating and uh, monotonous after a while. But it's good to be out here playing uh, some really tough cricket. Fantastic, you know, like experience for the team. I mean, like we've brought a young side here as well. And then all our new players that we've signed as well. So, um, you know, great experience for them, like playing against a side like that's going to the World Cup. So like we've learned a lot, I mean like from this tour, like I'm sure like my young team as well, you know, like has learned a lot. Um, plenty of positives that we're gonna take home. I mean we are still in preseason mode. And to come and play competitive cricket, I mean, you know, like in 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 Namibia, in a beautiful ground like this, I mean, you know, like was something special. Happy like with what we've achieved and um, our big positives, I mean like the NSD brain, I mean has been superb, you know, like the whole uh, type series. And the guys like Branty as well, I mean they've come through. And the bowling unit, I mean, in 40 degrees heat, I mean, have been really, really brilliant. Great mix, I think. A lot to work with, um, which is a positive for us. Um, being a new system now in South Africa, domestically, we, you're bound to have, most teams are bound to have a new squad, which is, in my opinion, something great. You're starting basically on a blank piece of paper now. It's good to have weeks like this when you can go through the tough times and you can go through results that don't go your way. Yeah, it was a great opportunity, you know, for me and, uh, you know, like I've taken it with both hands, to be honest. And the staff, I mean, you know, like, you know, like they've been soldiers. Um, it's been tough, I mean, coming here, you know, like with about 14 players, you know, like it's not easy to manage sometimes. Yeah, but Kez is the manager of the side, you know, like Das Neves as well as my assistant coach, Matt, you know, was quite brilliant. And the, and the guy like Dita as well, I mean, was, was quite good. So, like, overall, I think we did a good job. Um, you know, yes, we've got a few injuries, so like the physio, you know, as we get home, you know, like he's got some work to do. The hashtag I am champion campaign speaks to equality, inclusion and positivity both on and off the field and celebrates being a champion for good. It's also a clear message that we will not tolerate any kind of injustices and will stand together as South Africans united in our passion for our sport. The campaign will see Titans Cricket selling hashtag I am champion wristbands with all the proceeds going to the Sky Blues Trust, a trust that is set up to assist young South Africans with their educational needs. The wristbands will be available on the Titans website, which is www.titans.co.za slash sky-blues-trust and at the cricket shop at Supersport Park for just 40 rand. Yeah, the I Am Champion campaign, I think, is a wonderful campaign. Um, uh, proceeds uh, goes to the Sky Blue Trust, and that funds uh, education for, for um, talented cricketers that can't uh, afford either a secondary or tertiary education. So it is, a, it is a fantastic way to get involved. And I Am Champion uh, stands for what it says. It says I'm a champion human being. I'm a champion citizen. It stands for things that's positive stands against everything that is negative. Um, sports people uh, like to use their voice for good, so this is our way to say that we stand for an inclusive uh, South Africa and we stand for being a champion in the community. Everyone has a champion in their lives, but what does it take to be a champion? Is it achieving success, showing courage or overcoming adversity? Well, we asked the Momentum Multiplied Titans what they thought makes a champion. Someone that uh, bounces back from, uh, from hard times, someone that always finds a way um, to come out victorious at the end of every triumph. Someone who you can rely on, someone who's willing to go the extra yard, you know, when the team's down, they're willing to fight for every ball. Um, not necessarily with the outcome, but with the attitude. The person that's willing to go extra mile, the person that's willing to lead from the front, uh, and a person that takes up responsibility for the team. Someone that pulls through through any type of adversity. Um, you know, that's what the Titans is all about. If you look at all the trophies that we've won, we've won trophies um, through adversity. It's not, it has never been easy, but we've always found a way to find a way. Someone who has a winning mindset, um, who's always positive, um, who will 
When something is negative, we'll try and make it into a positive. Someone that obviously does the right things, you know, doesn't necessarily mean uh, winning all the time. It's someone that that's that plays the game, uh, uh, that has integrity, that has all of these things. Somebody that, that steps up um, when needed, and um, in the tough times, they're always looking looking to uh, to step up and look, look, look to make a big play. I, 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 I am a champion. Unfortunately, we've reached the end of our show, but make sure you stay updated by visiting www.titans.co.za for all you need to know about South Africa's leading cricket team. See you all next time.